Hello YouTube, and welcome back to the Loose Transistor channel. I'm your host Lucas, and we're back to New Year's and bringing you guys some awesome new content as promised. And the first thing that I'm bringing you guys today is gonna be the common filter. So some of you might heard me talk about it a little bit on the FPV show, or sorry, in the FPV show podcast. And uh, I gave you guys an overview of what it is and told you guys that I was gonna be doing a video series on it to explain a little bit more about it. And that's what we're doing today. Uh, before we jump into the common filters though, I wanna give you guys a quick update on some of the stuff that's going on. So first of all, I got this little guy here in the mail, which is a 20 by 20 uh, Omnibus F4 and I am going to be building this on the Featherlight. So um, I promised you guys a build and review on the Featherlight made by Falcon Multirotors and it's finally going to happen. It took me a little while but I finally got the right FC to do the job and to do it right. So we're going to be using this and the Micro Swift to make it a very very light 5 inch build. So stay tuned for that. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet because that's coming. Uh, another thing that I wanted to talk to you guys about is the Hyph 7 inch. So I'm still waiting for it to arrive. Um, it's somewhere in Canada. It's coming towards me. Uh, seems like it's stuck in customs or something. I don't know. Maybe Hyph put a giant dildo in the box. Who knows? But uh, it's coming. And once I got that thing, I'm going to do a full build and review for you guys on that as well. And I am going to be testing common filters on the giant 7 inch because uh, I was talking to RS2K today and he told me that he's been getting some fairly good results with common filters and biblades. So since I am a biblade guy, I really want to check that out and see how it's going to work out. Last little thing that I wanted to touch with you guys about is this right here. So this is a ready to fly quads RTFQ, um, basically an LC filter for your quads. Now I wouldn't necessarily put this on a tiny three inch or a two inch or a mic or anything like that, but a five inch, six inch probably, yeah, and seven inch definitely, uh, is just an LC filter to keep the, all those nasty lines off your video and just keeps your video nice and clean. So I bought a bunch of these and I'm gonna be retrofitting some of my builds to use it and I'll post some DVR for you guys so you can see whether or not they really did have a positive effect. So before we move on, I'm gonna give you guys a brief overview of what the common filters are and uh, why they're cool, why they help our, our scenario of quads. And if you're interested in learning a lot more, I will have links on the description with some pretty in-depth um, lectures that you can watch on the whole math behind common filters. So let's go over a brief overview of what common filters really are. So RS2K has been working on implementing common filters to beta flight and uh, common filters are basically a type of noise canceling algorithm that is used to remove noise in um, electrical systems or in readings and it helps improve the predictions that a system makes. Uh, in our case it's predicting the movement and uh, sorry the movement and position of your quad so that's what it's trying to do is trying to eliminate some of that noise. Um, this is a type of filter that's actually quite common in navigation applications GPS and all over the place so it's not new to the world it's just new to quads really. Um, in our case, it's being used to improve the flight characteristics by removing some of the unwanted noise from your motors, from your props, that sort of thing, um, and improve your flight characteristics. So the advantage of the common filter is that it's able to narrow in on the precise reading or the actual reading of what the quad is supposed to be getting through the gyro with very minimal data points. So other filters like low pass filters and they need a lot of data before they can start really making accurate predictions because they need to look at that data, see how much error there has been in the other predictions and then improve their predictions. Uh, the Kalman algorithm is a little bit faster in that it only really needs one data point which is either the first one which is almost random and then the subsequent ones that are being given by the gyro itself. So I'm not going to go into exactly how each part of the algorithm works, that's a lot of stuff to go over. So do check out the link below for a full uh, explanation of what common filters are. I'll have one that's a very long explanation and one that's a very short one. So you can watch each one if you want and uh, it will give you a good overview of what the gains do, all the different gains and all the different calculations. But uh, what you need to know about it is that it is really trying to eliminate noise from your gyro by having better predictions than other filters and by using less memory to do so. So in our case, the common filter is a little bit more efficient and uh, the faster we can make these predictions, the better it is for the, how the quad handles in there. So my plan with this is to actually take two quads. So I have this guy here. I have this other quad right here. So these are two not necessarily new builds. They've been around for a little while. They're not that beat up. They're about the same age and wear. So I wanna see how the common filters do on a quad that's a little bit beat up because that's what most of us are looking at. We all have quads that we've been flying a little while. We want them to fly better. So let's try common filters, right? Uh, I find that it's much easier to test these things on brand new builds because they're all nice and smooth. So we're not gonna get a very accurate portrayal of how good the filtering is or isn't. I'm really hoping that common is gonna be kind of like when we went from uh, 
uh, by quad to PT1, so I'm really hoping. So here, this guy right here has a Omnibus F7, so I'm gonna be flashing this guy here with uh, the Betaflight 3.3 and setting it up exactly as our SDK has outlined in his, um, in his post, and I'm gonna show you guys on this episode right now exactly how to do that. And this guy here has a CL Racing F4, which I've come to trust. It's like my go-to FC these days. And I'm gonna be flashing this guy here with 3.3 as well and using the same settings. And then we're gonna tune from there. So we're gonna do the same settings, fly it stock, see how that feels. And then we're gonna try to tune it and see how it compares. I have another quad, a CL Racing F4, exact copy of this guy with pretty much the same motors too. And I'm gonna leave that one with stock uh, Betaflight 3.2 and PT1, and we're gonna compare those as well. Now, uh, I was gonna release this video all as one part, but it was gonna take too long and you guys weren't gonna hear about this for a really long time, so I figured I'm gonna split it into two. First part is gonna be how we're gonna flash this thing and configure it, and second part will be the actual flight testing, which I'm hoping that the weather will cooperate with. So guys, let's uh, get down to setting up common filters and configuring them so that we can all try it out together. Beta flight, left, right, click, 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 all right guys, so the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do before you go ahead and flash all the stuff is to make sure that you're using the newest Betaflight configurator. It's always a good practice. So go ahead to the Betaflight configurator GitHub account uh, link that I posted below and uh, just download the zip that is compatible to with your machine. If you've already done this step, you already have 10.0.0.0, don't worry about it. So basically all you gotta do is click here, you're gonna download it. It's gonna take a couple seconds here. Then you open this guy, and you literally just drag this, this folder wherever you want, and you have Betaflight Configurator ready to go. That's all you need to do. Don't use the Chrome one anymore because it's not going to be supported, so don't even go there. So I already have, uh, already have Betaflight running here. We're going to leave that aside for now. Now, what you're going to want to do is download the correct version of Betaflight 3.3 that you want to use for your quad. If you go to the RC Groups link that I posted below, which is gonna be marked as uh, Betaflight Hex or whatever, you'll find it, no problem. Um, you're gonna see that there's two links for download. So this first one up here does not have uh, flight controller overclocking or FC overclocking on by default. So this is uh, just a note. If you are using an F3 flight controller, you probably want that one. You don't wanna push that thing too hard and burn up your processor or something like that. So make sure you read this thread too and make sure you really internalize what you're doing here. So uh, if you're using an F3 or you're not comfortable with overclocking your flight controller, make sure you grab it from this one right here. Now, if, you are, um, if you're looking for the latest and greatest, and this is what uh, our SDK is saying, basically you can get this one right here, which is the second link, and it has a big warning right here that says CPU overclock is enabled by default. And not only that, he is overclocking it to 240 megahertz. So right now, when it's winter, when it's cold, that's not a problem. You can totally use this if you're comfortable with it. That's probably what I'm gonna use on the F7 and on the F4. However, if you're not comfortable with this, do not grab this one. And if you live somewhere warm, don't grab this one because you're likely gonna burn up your uh, your flight controller. So do not use this one unless you know what you're doing, please. Um, so you're gonna get these two right here. And uh, these here are the settings that we're gonna input later on into uh, the CLI to uh, get the desired configuration that we need. All right, so I've already gone ahead and downloaded the hexes for my quad and I put them here on the desktop, right there. So I'm gonna get ready to do the flashing here. So the first thing we're gonna do, and I'm gonna flash the F7, and I'm only gonna go through one with you guys, I'll do the other one myself later. So we're gonna do the F7 one first. So here we go. So all you're gonna do is connect your quad. Connect your quad. Mine is set to auto connect right now. I'm gonna change that later, but you're gonna go into CLI and you're gonna type in BL to put it in book litter mode. And hopefully we get it right this time. Nope, sometimes I need to try it a couple times. Sometimes I have to do it with a battery connected. So that's another thing you might have to do with a battery connected. If you do connect the battery, take off your props, please. Otherwise you might hurt yourself. Just make sure you do it. I'm gonna to try to do it without connecting with a battery here. Okay. So now we have DFU up here, so a bootloader command worked. We are in DFU mode and we're gonna go to firmware flusher. I'm gonna do a full chip erase. I'm gonna leave the baud rate by itself. I'm not gonna change anything else. And then I'm gonna go load firmware local. So let's see here, desktop. So I have here my Omnibus F7 hex. Make sure you get the hex, not the bin. It's not gonna work with the bin. 
We grab the hex, boom. Now we're gonna flash the firmware. All right, saying we're running beta flight 3.3 and looks like everything here is correct. All right, guys, so when I was looking through the settings on this guy that I just flashed, I realized that all of the settings that RSTK was talking on that thread are actually already here. So if you're flashing using the hexes from that thread, you're probably gonna already have the default setting you need to go out and test common filters. Um, let's just go over some of the settings that he's recommending really quickly just to give you guys an overview and uh, just get an idea of what he's doing. So first of all, we're setting up air mode, anti-gravity and dynamic filter, which you should be doing on PT1 on 3.2 anyway, because it's a uh, good practice. I found good results using that. Uh, setting gyro notch one and two off. So we're basically banking on common filters to really take care of the noise, not the notch anymore. Uh, it's much better to have something dynamic taking care of that because the noise in our quads tends to vary and notch filters, once you set them, they, the noise tends to drift and they're no longer effective. Uh, a few other things here is basically enabling common filters. I actually need to check with RS2K what gyro common Q and gyro common R really are about, like what these gains do. And once I have that answer, I'll bring it over on the second video when we talk about tuning and we'll talk about all these little settings and how to best optimize them for your quad or how to change things based on your flight characteristics that you're encountering. Um, and then there's just a bunch of other stuff here, like for example, turning on gyro 32 kilohertz gyro if you have one available. Uh, if you don't, make sure you turn that off. Um, it's also setting the quad to use unsynced PWM and setting the PWM rate to 32 kilohertz somewhat to match with that gyro, with the gyro update rate. Um, I do, I think uh, the recommendation right now is to use multi-shot, seems to give better results than D-shot. Uh, again, might be a reason why uh, Race Flight always used multi-shot and uh, we can't kid ourselves here. This is a, a a race flight technology that's being ported into beta flight, like it or not. So uh, I can see why maybe some of the decisions that our race flight was making at that point had to do with the filtering types that they were using and maybe D-Shot wasn't compatible with that. So we'll have to see how that evolves and uh, how the software comes to integrate or not integrate D-Shot again. Um, a few other things with your deadband and PID process denomination, which has to do with the update rate between uh, your motors and the flight controller. Oops, I got lost here. And then it's setting a few defaults here for uh, PID. Now, these are interesting. They're a bit higher than what I see on most uh, defaults. However, it is interesting that it, uh, it yeah, a little bit higher, not much than defaults, maybe 10 points or so here or there. So not a huge difference, but it'll be interesting to see how it all goes down. And I noticed that D came down a lot on yaw especially, which is where I've been finding I've been having a lot of uh, twitches and so on. It's on the yaw D. So if you're getting weird flutters or whatever, try knocking down your D gain a little bit, especially on 3.2. So guys, that's pretty much it. It's all it takes to get common filters on your quad is to flash the correct version of beta flight 3.3 from the thread that I just linked to. And it's already gonna have all the defaults you need to go ahead and test and fly this thing, which is freaking awesome. Uh, I'm really looking forward Forward to getting these two birds in the air and testing out common filters and eventually getting the seven inch and doing a brand new build and using common filters on that to see how that works out. So for this video, that's all the information I'm gonna give you guys. On the second video, we're gonna talk about actually tuning with common filters, my experiences with it, whether or not bi blades fly better now or not, and whether or not I have to give up on my bi blades and go all the way back to tri blades again, we'll have to see. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the show today. I hope you learned something today. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, make sure you drop them below on the comments and I'll do my best to clarify anything that I might've missed here. And I'll make sure that I clarify that to you on the second video. So guys, as always, thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time. Straight.